Hey guys, a lot of you requested a hardware mod video for running the Crossfire Nano on its maximum power settings on the Jumper t light and I am happy to deliver. I tried several different options until reverting to my initial idea. In process I did a lot of reverse engineering, but I will spare you the gory details and simply get to the gist of it. What I am going to do is power the step up converter on the external module bay directly from the battery, but with a twist. I want this to be a clean mod with as few components as possible and as convenient as possible. No modifications on the PCB, no cutting traces. If you can hold a soldering iron, you can do this mod. With this mod, the external module bay will be shut down when you switch off the radio and you will be able to switch to the internal module bay, which will also turn off the external module, as you would expect from a radio with external module bay. You will need the following items. Your soldering tools of choice. A bit of wire, we will add some proper power wires. I am using 20 AWG here, but a bit smaller will also be okay. I would not recommend anything thicker or you might have problems running the wires under the module bay back into the radio. A 10k or 100k ohm resistor, we will use it as a pull down resistor. A logic level and channel MOSFET. I chose the F12 and 10L, but anything with similar specs is okay. I left a link to the datasheet in the description. A bit of heat shrink epoxy or some other sort of strong adhesive. I assume you know how to take the radio apart to get inside, if not, check my video and the cards. I tried to film while soldering, but it was impossible for me to get any good shots, that's why I decided to go with close-up images instead. Step 1. On the step-up converter board, desolder the green wire and replace it with a black one. Leave the wire in the plug, we will use it later on. Replace the blue wire with a red one. Those will be our new power lines. I decided to solder them in the other direction than the other wires because it was simpler to route the wires back into the radio. Looking back, I should have swapped all the wires around. Step 2. Solder the blue wire, which is the switched battery voltage, to the top of the pull-down resistor. Shorten the green wire, which is ground, and solder it to the other side of the pull-down resistor. Step 3. Feed the wires through the hole in the radio and attach the module bay. Be careful not to pinch the wires. At this point it is a good opportunity to check the work you have done so far. Attach power to your new power leads, preferably from a regulated power supply, but it can also just be a 5 volt source. Measuring voltage between pins 2 and 3 on the back of the external module bay should give you a reading of around 7.8 volts. If this is the case, you are good to continue. Step 4. Shorten a piece of ground wire and solder it to the source pin of the MOSFET that is the right pin. Put a bit of heat shrink on the contact to properly isolate the connection. I chose to shorten the legs of the MOSFET to just be long enough so I could solder everything up to them. To the center pin, the drain, solder the ground wire that is coming in from the external module bay. Don't forget to slide on a piece of heat shrink beforehand. To the left pin, the gate, solder the pull down resistor so that the blue wire is closer to the FET. Again, don't forget to put the heat shrink on the wires before soldering them to the FET. Step 5. Shorten the new power leads and solder them to the battery tabs. I used my soldering iron to melt away the liquid tape on those contacts. It is best to reapply it once you are done. Don't be irritated by my black and blue wires here. I prefer the softer silicon cables and had those lying around so I just swapped them out. At this point I would again check that all the connections are solid and everything is insulated as good as possible. Attach the MOSFET to the case. Use whichever glue you prefer. It will not get hot at all, so no risk of melting anything. If you want to test it first before fully committing, I recommend using some Blu-Tac to hold the MOSFET in place. Step 6. Plug in the external module lead and power lead to the mainboard and close up the radio. Do a dry run, don't plug in your Crossfire module yet. Make sure your Crossfire model is selected and again measure the voltage between pins 2 and 3 on the external module bay. If you have around 7.8 volt here, everything went according to plan and you can proceed with the module. As you can see, the module is off when the radio is not powered on and will switch on as soon as you power the radio on. When you select a model that uses the internal module, the external module will be switched off too. To 
comfortably adjust the Crossfire Nano module on your radio, I recommend using the Agent Light Lua script by TBS. I leave a link to the content of my SD card in the description. Just unpack it to an SD card and you should be able to follow the next steps. Long press the system button. On the tool screen select the first entry, TBS Agent Light. Select Crossfire Micro TX. In the next menu scroll down to General. Disable dynamic power by setting it to off. Obviously you just want to disable this for testing, to make sure you will be able to transmit on full 1W. Set max power to 1W. Now monitor transmitter and receiver. I have run about a dozen packs through the radio to make sure everything is working properly before presenting it to you. And it worked beautifully. Just as a reference, on 500 milliwatt I get a power on time of about 4 hours with a high quality 3000 milliamp hour 20 amp constant discharge 18650 cell. On 1 watt I get a power on time of about 2 hours and 45 minutes with the same cell. Both times I had my battery low limit set to 3.4 volt and the battery ended up at a resting voltage of 3.5 volt. That is it. Now you know how to run your Crossfire Nano module on maximum power with the jumper T light. One thing to consider is that you need to use high quality cells, rated with a high discharge current and high capacity. Current draw from the Crossfire module will spike and you run the risk that the battery will drop below 3.2 volt. That is when the sticks of the radio will start jittering, as I showed in my last video. All of you who stayed till here are probably interested in what this mod does exactly. Here a short explanation. When enabling the external module bay, the radio switches battery power to the external module bay's step-up converter, that is the voltage that comes through the blue wire. Unfortunately, the switching transistors are not capable of handling the Crossfire Nano module on higher power levels and the whole reason why we need this mod. In this mod, we use this voltage to switch the N-channel MOSFET, connecting drain and source and thus closing the circuit between external module and battery. In the default state, the gate of the MOSFET is pulled to ground and thus not conducting. With the N-channel MOSFET, we can only easily switch the low side, so to ground. I usually prefer to switch the high side, but this would mean we have to use a P-channel MOSFET and a couple more components to basically realize the same thing. One last thing to consider is the leakage current of the FET, the current that will be drawn when the FET is off and pulled to ground, in other words, when the radio is off. In case of the selected FET, this is 100 nanoamps. This will discharge a fully charged 3000 milliamp hour battery in about 3000 years. So nothing to really worry about. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also like and subscribe, it really helps me out.